In July of 2011, Rebecca Zahao was found dead hanging from the balcony of the Spreckles mansion. Now, this case grabbed national attention after the sheriff ruled her death a suicide, but the family believes differently. They ended up suing the brother of her boyfriend, Jonah Shacknai, for wrongful death. They won a settlement, but have been unable to have authorities change the cause of death from suicide to undetermined or even homicide. Now a new augmented reality app takes people inside the crime scene, and one of the cases they feature is the death of Rebecca Zahau. There's the courtyard. And this courtyard is, you know, within the Spreckles Mansion there in Coronado. And so I walk into that courtyard and I can see Rebecca hanging over the balcony. And this is exactly what Adam would have seen down to the inch in terms of when he comes out of the guest house and sees Rebecca there. And then when I go up into the next augmented reality door, which is the bedroom, the prep area, as I call it, where you have knives on the floor. There's the black paint with the message on the door. There's the red rope tied to the bed. And I can follow that rope out the balcony and then look down at Rebecca hanging there. 25-year detective Paul Holes is describing walking through the Spreckles mansion using an augmented reality app called Crime Door. It's absolutely accurate. It is giving me that three-dimensional um, feedback as if I were actually there. The app takes you through portals into a space created by crime scene photos and evidence in order to recreate a scene in 3D. We had no idea really how detailed and accurate this would be, but we were all aware that, you know, you can read you can read an expert opinion, you can watch uh, an expert talk about it, you can read what happened in court, you can follow us through trial. And, you know, you're just reading something or you're hearing someone talk about it. Now, with, with Crime to War, you can actually experience what we've been so upset about all these years and why we do want this case reopened. Rebecca died two days after six-year-old Max, son of her boyfriend, Jonah Shacknai, fell from the staircase of the mansion. Rebecca and her younger sister were the only ones home at the time of the child's accident. Max died later that week on July 16th. Sheriff Bill Gore announced two months later that Rebecca's death was a suicide and that the child's death was an accident. Rebecca's family disagreed and filed a wrongful death lawsuit against her boyfriend's brother, the one who found her, Adam Shacknai. A jury found him guilty, but that judgment was overturned on appeals. They finally came to a settlement of $600,000. Creators of the app said they wanted the focus to be accuracy without judgment in order to allow people to see for themselves. Our goal is accuracy. And in looking at the information that we have had, we feel very confident that we, we've created a scene that's accurate. And then we put it out to the public, we put it out to Doug, we put it out to Paul, and we say, please weigh in, add additional content, give your voice to it, and share it out and let uh, the community understand it a little bit better. When I first got involved in Rebecca's case, I fully expected to probably land on the side of the medical examiner's office and the San Diego authorities. But as I dug into the physical evidence, as I reconstructed this crime scene, I came to the opposite conclusion. And this is where I believe that the medical examiner's office has a duty to change this ruling from suicide to undetermined, minimally. I believe it's a homicide, but at least open it up. When Paul and, and Neil both agreed that, you know, this was this is a homicide, that it's not a suicide, it just kind of, your heart kind of melts a little bit. I mean, you just kind of, it's, you're like, thank God. You know, there's there's people out there that can genuinely look at this with an open mind from beginning to end, examine all of it and then come up with a, a very a detailed presentation and put it, a, put it out there to explain what we've been talking about since day one. 
So as I mentioned earlier, the new app called Crime Door uses augmented reality to accurately recreate crime scenes in 3D. And joining me now to discuss the app are the co-founders, Lauren and Neil Mann. Lauren and Neil, good to talk with you tonight. Thank you for having us. Well, you know what? I'm a crime junkie. We spoke about this before. I have never seen anything like this. So talk to me about the technology that you use to create these portals. Sure. The technology is called augmented reality. And we saw it come on the scene for a blip in 2016 with, with uh, Pokemon Go. And what augmented reality allows for is it can create overlays in your real world that blends the technology with what you're seeing in your three-dimensional universe. And in this case, it's a doorway into a recreation of the Zahao scene. And we felt that we could create an accurate uh, crime door with this case because we did have access to the crime scene photos. And that's what we need to create a door. We, we don't have an opinion in the content. The, the app is a curation of all the two-dimensional content that tells the story, and then the three-dimensional AR elements, which are based on the fact. And so we deliver that to the public, and we see what they can do. Now, the footage we're looking at right now, you have uh, over 500 cases, I believe. The footage that we were just putting up is of the John JonBenet Ramsey case. So you're including several high-profile cases. Talk to me about the response you've gotten, let's say, from John JonBenet. Well, we've gotten uh, a huge response from the true crime community. They're very interested in it. They want to know more. Um, they definitely see this as going down the rabbit hole with all these different types of cases, learning more. And it is an international app as well. So not only locations around them where they live, but also they can zoom around the map and look at different cases around the world. And you also, because I've played around on the app quite a bit, I, I see that you have a lot of evidence so you can go into different avenues. Why did you think it was important to show the actual evidence with this augmented reality that seems so real? Well, uh, as I said, the only way to, to understand something would be to experience it. And it needed to be accurate. And so the tiniest of details... Uh, are critical. And as an example, in the, there's a how case, if you were to look at the base of the bed, the bed frame, uh, that had only moved a few inches. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, Paul and, and Doug thought was very curious, that if somebody had dropped uh, and it being attached to the bed, it would have moved the bed farther. And so we reflect that in the scene that it's accurate down to the inch. And so we believe that that was critical in people understanding that the experience. I know you said your focus was accuracy. As families have, uh, families of some of the victims of the cases that you show, as these families go through these portals, if they choose to, what's their reaction? Well, you know, we've really tried to work with um, some of the families that we've um, featured in Crime Door. And so we really want their support as well to make these uh, these portals to be, as we said, as accurate and to give a voice to the victims. So you're already kind of setting new boundaries for the crime junkie with this 3D augmented reality. What's next for Crime Door? Whoops. We have a, a long runway of some very exciting things. Yeah, we have a long runway of some really exciting things we're gonna do. Uh, we're at the, just the tip of the spear of augmented reality and the interactivity that the user will be able to uh, experience when they explore these scenes. Uh, so, so many immersive experiences are coming, more content is coming, more partnerships with families, more unique experiences, and, and more partnerships with media companies that are creating this content. So, I think you'd expect to see significant growth in the content in the coming months and the AR experiences uh, going to a whole different level by the end of 2021. Certainly could be very interesting, especially with new eyes on these scenes, if anything shakes out. All right, uh, Lauren and Neil, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you.